In this video, we're gonna be looking at a subscriber C15 who actually brought their truck from out of state to have me look at it. It's got various complaints that I was trying to address in it, so it's gonna be a day in the shop of me troubleshooting and repairing their complaints. Hope you guys enjoy. In this video, we're going to be working on a customer's C15, and this customer actually drove from out of state to have me work on their truck, and I've had several people actually do that, as far as Texas, up to Idaho, to have me work on their truck. I'd like to say I'm deeply honored that you would respect me enough to drive that far to have me work on your vehicle, but let's get into what's actually going on in their vehicle and see if I can help. So what we got here is a beautiful... BXS. So BXS serial number is the first of the assert C15s. It went BXS, MXS, then NXS. See, the fuel pressure gauge is hooked up there, and he has main complaint is a vibration in the engine when it's heavily loaded. Now, when he brought it to us, uh, looking at the damper there, the damper is original, and this has over a million miles on it, and it's been in frame before. So, vibration generally, fuel pressure possibly, um, and also. We're looking here is his coolant temperature has been fluctuating significantly under load he doesn't notice it but i was watching on et and it was fluctuating now notice he's got a lot of jumper harnesses and harness lengtheners that have been installed he didn't install them someone else has but um, he also had a few oil leaks he wanted me to look at and what i could see it looked like the oil cooler here and the oil filter housing also whoever did his in frame did not replace the oil dipstick block plugs, which I have a video on how to do that, but mistake I made in my first reboot, I did not re uh, replace those either, but you should always replace those, which I have replaced them even on ones where it's almost impossible on every reboot I've done since. Now notice here, this is the CAT guidelines for vibration damper replacement. Notice there's no specific mileage, and really what you're looking for is signs of overheat, but really, Time and mileage are going to slowly cause the viscous fluid inside that damper to harden. It's not going to do its job as much anymore. Fortunately, it's sealed, so you can't really tell. Now, what we're doing here is starting it to check for the fuel pressure. I noticed when we were on the test drive, it was only building about 80 PSI fuel pressure under load, or not under load, but about 1500 RPM. Now, notice the specification is about 75 to 95. Usually, you want about 75 at idle and about 95 when you're up around 1500 RPM. Now notice, it's only running about 65, so we're about 10 PSI low at idle. Now idle is not as important as under load because obviously your injectors don't push much fuel at idle, but they push a lot of fuel under load, so you want the pressure higher. Now, it's not specifically higher is better, it's that usually when you get it closer to 100, that seems to be where the assert engines run the best in my experience. Now, if you don't know, there's a trick. You can actually raise your RPMs to idle them up using the cruise control switch here. I didn't know that my first probably two years as a diesel tech, and then someone showed me, and I thought it was really cool. Maybe I didn't know that, but you can do that with the cruise control switch. So we're at about 1400 RPM in here, and 78 PSI. His gauge inside shows about 80, but we want to be closer to 100. So what we're looking at here also is during the test drive, I could see on ET, the coolant temp was bouncing all over the place. It would fluctuate between 165 to 175 or 180 within a couple seconds. It was not something where the temp was bouncing that fast. It was just the temp sensor's not reading accurately, and it seems to be bouncing a little bit. So you can see my fuel pressure gauge set up there. And he had just replaced the fuel filters. Generally, whenever you have a low pressure problem i always replace the filters first he had just replaced them though so what we're going to be doing is changing our fuel pressure regulator there and this is on the fuel return side of the system and there's also a regulator inside of the fuel transfer pump that this can also cause lower than normal fuel pressure either one can cause the problem and unfortunately you can't really just check them you need to replace them that's the plug for the regulator there it is much harder than the other one now i've got this nice uh pig is the brand of this pan i bought this about a year ago it is probably one of the best purchases i've made like tool wise it holds about 20 gallons it's fairly rigid it's heavy duty um, i'll put a 
link. If you want to get it through the channel on the Amazon affiliate link, just click the link. But I always put it when I'm doing oil, coolant, fuel. That way it doesn't get on the ground instead of me mopping it up after it's all in the pan. And it's about the same width as the engine, so makes it easy. So what we're doing here is removal of this is pretty easy. It's one inch wrench. And all you're gonna do is loosen it. Nothing special about that. Now, it is on the fuel return side so that you are gonna lose some fuel. Not a ton, a few ounces. And what's the guideline for replacing this? Well, this one appeared to be original. It has rust and original yellow paint on it. Generally, you don't paint them when you replace them. So if it had had no paint on it, that would indicate that it probably been replaced. But there's not a lot of checking you can do for these regulators and they're fairly cheap. So if you're having a low fuel pressure problem, I usually start with this after the fuel filters. So here's your new one. It always comes with this red cap. It does not come with the main blue O-ring there though. That is a la carte. You will need to purchase that separately. It does come with the backing seal and the seal on top though. And I highly recommend lubricating all the seals and the threads before installing it. I've installed these before with just a little bit of oil or not with any oil and I've had it peel the O-ring there. So be careful to do that, just lubricate it. It's not gonna hurt anything. And you're just gonna run it in and you are supposed to torque these and they torque to 21 foot pounds, which doesn't feel super tight, but remember this isn't a head bolt. This is literally just a fuel regulator check valve. So just torque it and you should be good to go. And then we can recheck our pressures and hopefully that brought our pressures up. So now we are ready to fire it up again. And now we're gonna check it. And hopefully the pressures are within spec now. If they are, then we don't have to worry about the much harder to do fuel transfer pump one. So it went from 65 at idle to about 70, we'll call it 70. So that's still under specification. Well, specification 74 plus or minus five. So technically it's now within specification at idle. Let's rev it up. Uh, we probably gained about two PSI. I remember it was about 78 before, now it's at 80. So that, that number's still low and that's the more important number. So here's our updated spring kit for the fuel transfer pump, 339-4983. And that little kit, which is really just a plug and a spring is about 80 at least that's what it was here and it is difficult I've done three or four of these they are tricky to do and this one was particularly difficult because this one has this uh, wire clamp and main harness running right next to it which made it even harder it might be hard to tell but this bracket on the right side of the screen is actually your power steering pump bracket so there was very little room in here and it's very dirty uh, this this job was tricky. So all you're gonna do is pull the plug here, remove this plug, and remember you're gonna lose a little bit of fuel here because it's your fuel transfer pump. And then there's a spring, pull the spring out. Now there's a plunger behind this and generally it is stuck inside of there. But what I like to do is get a magnet, pull the plunger out, and since you pull it out, just inspect to make sure it's not damaged or anything. This is what it should look like. And it is directional, so make sure it goes back in that way. So what does the kit, what's the difference in the kit? Well, the one on the right is the new spring. Obviously, it is higher pressure than the old spring. It's a little bit longer. And that's really it, it's just the spring and the plug. Now, depending on what part you're working on, sometimes it's easier to install parts than remove it. So is this one easier to install, right? Wrong. Now, I want you to know in this next clip that the color red signifies my anger level. So you, you can remove the transfer pump to do this job. I generally do not do that, but this one with the addition of the harness next to this, let's just say maybe I was seeing red trying to get this plug to compress that spring. I'm just gonna be quiet for a second. Anywho, 45 minutes later, we got it in there. 
And what were our results? Well, all the frustration was worth it because here at Idol, 75 on the dot. So that is good. That means that that's up 5 PSI. But more importantly, what's the other pressure at? Remember, that needs to be closer to 100. Generally around 95 is the specification, but also it really does matter. 95 on the dot. So fuel pressure is up. Hopefully that'll take care of some of his vibration. Captain's log, day two. Is there no sun in this cursed country? It actually was sunny yesterday, but it's been quite the rainy spring. So day two here with the red truck and fuel systems up to specifications now. I don't know why I did air quotes. It is at specification now. And we're gonna do the damper today. Notice I said damper, I used to call it a dampener. Cat calls it a damper, damper. Everyone calls it a dampener. Damper is the proper term, at least with the cat. Um, anyway, it's kind of a pain because it's very close to the fan shroud and it's very close to the fan. I'm hoping I can do the fan. Just by removing the fan, we'll get enough room, but I'll show you what I'm doing. So as I said in the beginning of the video, the damper appeared to be original. Customer had no idea if it had ever been replaced. And so we are, he approved replacing it, which I think is a good idea if it's original. Now, the fan needs to be removed and we should be able to get it off. Now, what I'm going to use is two guide studs, 5 8 by fine thread. And that'll really help remove and install this without getting the new one on uh, would be a real pain in the butt. Also, the pulley drive would fall off and that would also make it very difficult. Now, if you've never pulled a fan before, it's a pain because the mounting bolts, which are generally nuts, although the studs are coming out here and the nuts are staying on, are in the front of the fan, at least on most fans. And there's six of them. Of course, you can't see them. Now, luckily, there's a lot of distance between the fan and the radiator on this one, so I can actually fit that little 3 8 Milwaukee Impact they have in there, which has enough gumption to remove the bolts. Well, they're technically studs with nuts, but... That made it a lot easier. Now, of course, you're gonna to wanna to hand tighten those when it goes back on, but here are the retaining bolts for the damper and the pulley drive. Now, you don't wanna pull all the bolts and have your serpentine belt on there because it can knock it out of the way when you go to put your bolts back in. So it's a good idea to loosen your fan belt there, which I did, you can see it's loose here. You just have to move that tensioner with the half inch ratchet or Serpentine belt tool. Now I've got the camera facing what would be me, so I'm working on the other side. And I've got one of these Chicago pneumatic half inch impacts, which are very small profile, but they hit very hard and they're not that expensive. Um, I don't use them that often. I, I use my electric impacts a lot, but I don't have an electric half inch that hits as hard as this air one. So, and these are ha or they're 5 8 fine thread bolts, and they torqued about 200 foot pounds, and I don't believe these had ever been removed, unless maybe front main seal had been replaced, but took them right out. So first stud in, like I said, I'm gonna put two studs in, so we're gonna remove two bolts and put two studs in. Then you can just remove the other four bolts. Now you'll probably have to move the damper. I had to move it to get all four out, or else it'll hit the fan trout. Working in this spot is difficult also because you can only use one hand to do just about everything. There's just no position where both hands will fit. So once all six are out, your damper will come off, hopefully. And here's your new one. And of course they don't paint it because that would be too much work for them. So I went ahead and put two primer coats and then two coats of paint on and then slid it on. Now I have copper anti-seize. That's what Cat tells you to install on here. Don't forget your six bolt hole washer. And then we're going to install the bolts. Now, 200 foot-pounds with my brand new torque wrench I just got there. It's uh, one of the digital ones, which I've never liked before, but I actually like it quite a lot. Two reasons. It goes up to 300 foot-pounds. It's longer handled. And uh, if, if you're trying to torque it and it's moving on you, what I'm telling you here is use a uh, rotator tool at the flywheel. That'll allow you to torque it. But also it does torque angle, which I don't need to do on this engine, but I have had to do it, especially on that C10 I was working on, and it made it a lot nicer. So 200 foot pounds is the specification. 201, so pretty much right on the dot. So here we go. Put the fan back on, those bolts torqued to about 35 foot pounds. You can see it's painted, smoothed out. It felt smoother to me. Of course the customer needed to drive it under a load, and he didn't have a load here, but 
he let me know the next day that, guess what? He's very happy that, yes, the vibration's pretty much smoothed out now and his engine's running much better. How about a little destruction of the week? We didn't really have any destruction in the shop this week, but Jerry sent me some destruction pictures. What we're looking at here is a C9. Had a big old overheat and really scored the liners here. Uh, look at that. It pretty much destroyed the piston. All of the rings, too, are stuck inside of the piston ring. Pretty bad damage. Thanks for sending the pictures and thanks for watching the video.